Hey, I'm Stephanie Rublitz. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are starting with the coat series. I'm so excited. Okay, so before Christmas, I showed you all the fabric that I got from uh, Minerva Crafts. They gifted the fabric to me, so again, big thank you to Minerva Crafts. I've linked their website below if you want to check them out. Um, and they got me this beautiful, beautiful, um, this is just a, obviously a scrap, this uh, wool tweed. It took me a second to think of that. This beautiful wool tweed. Um, and it's it, it was a fantastic fabric to learn how to shape a collar, shape a lapel, to do all that pad stitching on because it's so thick. It is a little bit, you can see how shifty it is, like it is definitely one of those fabrics that you cut out your pattern and then when you go back to do something to that piece, like line it up with your pattern again because it will be, <laughs> it will be a different shape. It's one of those. Um, but because of the thickness of this, I was very easily able to just work on that technique and I think in future when I do like a suit jacket um, because this whole pad stitching thing was quite new to me um, I think that I will be better prepared to do it on a finer fabric because I kind of learned to get my rhythm with this stuff so what else did I use for this project well I have a couple of books that I got I just got these at my local library um, and I didn't really know what was going to be good what was going to be helpful what wasn't so the first one is Tailoring from the Illustrated Guide to Sewing. Um, this book was pretty awesome, but I didn't wind up using it a whole bunch. It goes into, I mean, it has the whole suit in it, so it has pants and jacket in here. It also has a lot about fitting issues. So if that's something that you feel like you're gonna struggle with, this one might be a good book to check out. But the one that I did wind up using the most was Tailoring, a classic guide to sewing the perfect jacket. Um, what was awesome about this one is that um, it wasn't, it didn't talk as much about fitting, but it was really step by step, clear instructions. Everything had a photo with it. Um, so for doing my first coat, this was the best book that I came across. As for what I'm going to be using for my interfacing process, I do have some Taylor's canvas or horsehair canvas. And what you need to know about um, this particular type of canvas is you can see that there's lines going down. And if you fold along the line, it folds really quite easily. But if you fold against that, it doesn't fold as easily. Um, and so this is why this is so fantastic for the structure of coats and jackets. So when you see me putting things down, it might be like, hey, that's not the way the grain line should be. The grain kind of runs weft-wise instead of warp-wise. And also there's times that I'm not, it's not like the fabric where I have to be um, concerned with the grain line so that things are draping properly. When it's the interfacing and you're using the canvas, it's not about drape, it's about stability. So you're going to have um, the weft direction of your fabric, for example. You're going to want to run crossways and then one sort of on a diagonal. The, the purpose of that is because, especially for women, right, when our, the fabric of our coat comes down over our chest, we can get, when we move, sort of like a funny little dip right here and a, a wrinkle in our coat. So that's to sort of help give you structure and not have things like bunch up that way, if that makes sense. So if you're seeing that my grain lines are not where you think grain lines should be, that would be why. I also have just some basic sew-in thick interfacing. I'm gonna use this on the lower portion of my button placket because a couple of reasons. One, I took everything that they had on the roll at the fabric store of this stuff. But also, this stuff's more cost effective. So in terms of keeping costs down, um, this I, I'm just gonna splice this onto the bottom of um, my of this stuff. The other thing I'm going to need is I've got some twill tape here, um, and that is going to be used on the edge of my um, lapels, as well as running a line right where the fold is on my lapel and that's just going to help give some extra stability because this is it's not um perfectly on the bias but your fold is on the bias so your garment could potentially stretch there and you really don't want that so my tool tape is going to be 
um, my extra little bit of structure there. So I'm going to trace out my pattern pieces onto my horsehair canvas or my tailor's canvas. And let me tell you, uh, make sure you have a pencil sharpener close because this stuff, <laughs> like it just runs through your pencil like crazy. It's actually really rough in texture. So it's almost like you're drawing on sandpaper. Now in my sewing pattern, it tells me to interface the collar with the single piece, the single collar piece. There's a double collar piece for the under collar, and then there's a single collar piece for the upper collar. And so that is, um, it's, it's, they're sandwiched together. And um, instead of using the single piece for my interfacing, as the pattern suggests, I'm going to use the double piece. So there will be a seam in the middle of this, and that's because I really want the grain line to be running along um, those horse hairs in the canvas. So it is running in weft direction um, instead of warp direction, which is generally your grain line. So that's why you're gonna see my grain line is going um, in the warp direction. Once I start to shape this, it will all become clearer. Okay, next thing I have to do is I need to mark my seam allowance all the way um, around my collar piece. So on this collar piece, it calls for the standard 5 8 inch um, seam allowance in the center seam. And then I think it was like a 3 8 um, all around the rest of it. So it does have a smaller seam allowance than anywhere else on my jacket pattern. So make sure you make note of that if your pattern is the same or not. All right, so I've gone and sewn both of my collar pieces together and you can see um, there's my center seam and the way that it comes together is it, it brings that, those weft horsehair lines into sort of a, a triangle. And so it wants to sort of um, curve easier around the neck that way. So on the pattern that they're using in this book, it is a pattern that already comes with things like where your collar stand, where your, your fold line for that should be, is already marked on their pattern. The pattern that I used was not intended to be tailored this way. It was intended to have just sewn in interfacing used to sort of stiffen certain parts of the garment. So what I did was I pinned my interfacing layer of my collar to my, um, my practice garment, my muslin, and I just tried it on and I folded the collar down and then I pinned it, or I clipped it rather, um, where the fold was. And that's how I got that line. So when you're working with a pattern that wasn't really intended to be tailored this way, you kind of got to just try and figure some things out as best as you can. Um, so you can see, I just put these clips on where it wanted to roll. And I, I just, this is my mock-up that I have it on right now. Um, so I'm just gonna unpin this and I'm gonna try and true up the whole thing as best I can to make sure that both sides are the same. Um, and then that is going to be my roll line between my stand and my collar. Now you can see I can actually sort of just follow the line of where those clips were um, clipped onto this thing. I'm just sort of folding it along here because I can't really see that other side very well. So um, yeah, I'm just folding it in half so that I can mark the line from one side onto the other as best I can. In hindsight, I totally could have just grabbed some transfer paper. That would have been a good idea, but uh, I didn't think of that. All right, so now I'm going to start drawing my stitching lines for my pad stitching. So from that center line, we're gonna call that the anchor line. From that anchor line to the bottom of the stand, so that's where the, the collar piece connects to the coat, um, I am going to mark my lines a quarter inch apart because I need a little bit more stability in this part of the collar.
All right, so I have all those lines done in the stand part of my collar. Now I'm gonna work on the points of the collar. So we want these points to kind of roll into the body. Um, they won't do that when you're wearing it, they'll just sort of press against your body, which will keep them from folding out. These ones I'm going to do 1 8 of an inch. I want these lines to be very tight together because I really want to be able to work that shaping. The tighter your lines, um, your stitch lines are, the more you're going to be able to shape and the more uh, rigidity you're going to have. Okay, so both of my points are marked now. I'm going to do um, the top of the collar. So this goes from that anchor line out to the outer edge of the collar. And these lines, I'm going to do it 3 eighths of an inch. I don't need as much shaping. I just need a bit of stability. And as you can see, these lines are going right up to those um, lines that I put on the points. So that's why you want to mark your points first is because these lines sort of butt up against those. And you just keep marking these out until you run out of lapel, basically. The whole lapel is marked, now I can start stitching. So for your main anchor line, um, that first row of stitching on, between your canvas and your fashion fabric, the book suggested using a running stitch and another source that I found online way back when I first started thinking about doing this, they recommended doing a back stitch. So just to try and see what worked better, I ended up doing a back stitch on my anchor line for my collar and I did a running stitch for the anchor line on my lapels. Um, and I didn't really notice much of a difference between the two, honestly, so you do you. So the tricky thing about this is um, you need to sort of have your work flat, but you need to have your fingers on the other side because you really need to be feeling um, for that needle to make sure that you're not coming through too far. You really only want to be grabbing like the barest like one or two threads on um, your fashion fabric just so that we're not seeing a whole bunch of threads poking through. Um, once again, this fabric is like the absolute easiest to work on and even if I did show threads, like you probably couldn't see them. But I'm still really trying hard to work on my technique here so that the next time I do this, maybe if I'm making a suit jacket or something like that, um, I'll already sort of have that technique down. Okay, so I've got my anchor line here. Um, now everything is going to work from that anchor line out. The way this sort of works is that when you have two layers of fabric and you curl one on top of the other, the one on the top sort of ends up being a little bit bigger. And so in curling them while stitching them together is how you get your shaping. So I'm going to roll this over my finger um, and that is going to cause the two fabrics to shift against each other. And as I stitch them together, it will hold the shape of that roll. And you can see I've already started a little bit of pad stitching here and there's already shape to it. It's just, it's actually really cool to watch it come together um, and see how it actually shapes your fabric. Now I'm holding my thread over my finger so that um, I'm rolling that fabric and I'm going to run my stitches around that stitching line. So think of it like even though the stitches look diagonal, I'm not stitching diagonal. I'm taking my stitches straight across that line. Um, and what ends up happening is it's almost like your thread sort of does a spiral around the line that you marked. And so the only part that's diagonal is the top of your stitch. Every stitch you take um, should be straight across, perpendicular to the line that you drew. As for the distance between your stitches, what you want to be aiming for is about the same distance between each stitch as is the distance between your lines. So the lines that I'm working on right now are about a quarter inch apart, so I'm trying to keep my stitches a quarter inch apart. And I'm just going to follow that all the way back and forth until I've worked this entire part of the collar. And here you can see I have the entire stand stitched and it just, it doesn't want to lay flat. It wants to stand up. I'm geeking out over this. It's super cool. <laughs> 
So I went and did the same thing on the sort of outer edge of the collar with just bigger stitches because those ones are 3 8 Now I gotta work on the corners here. You really want those to push into your body and so you are gonna shape those a little bit more. So you can see how I've got it rolled over my finger here. And I'm just gonna do exactly as I was doing before. I'm gonna run my thread around that line that I, I drew on there. Um, all the while, I'm going to be folding that point or curving that point downwards. And that's just gonna help it press into my body so that it doesn't flip out when I'm wearing it. All right, here we go, a fully shaped collar. Huzzah! <laughs> and just look at it, like you couldn't make it lay down flat if you wanted it to. Um, obviously I still have to press this when I get everything together, but this is your basic collar shape. So from this point on, I just followed the pattern instructions for installing the collar onto the coat. Um, I really want this series to be focused on like sort of how do you insert tailoring techniques into a pattern that doesn't necessarily call for it. Um, and so how you put your collar on might be a little bit different depending on the collar and the pattern and all that kind of stuff. So I will leave that to you and your pattern. I hope you will join me next week when we are going to um, shape the front bodice and the lapels. Much more pad stitching in sight, I promise. And actually, I gotta be honest, I really enjoy it. <laughs> it's sort of like a, just a zen activity that you can just get into and it's fantastic. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this project. So that's it for this week. I hope I will see you next week. Until then, have a good one.